we are looking at choice edible mushroom. I would say the most choice edible mushroom in Colorado. And this is a mountain mushroom. It's called Rocky Mountain Porcini. You might hear it also called King Bolete. And uh, very closely related mushrooms in England are called seps. Um, they might be called steinpilz. Uh, but what we're looking at is a mushroom with a convex reddish kind of red brown cap. And then on the underside of the cap, the spore producing surface, those are called pores. Notice there's no gills here. These are spongy pores on the underside of the cap and convex red brown cap with pores on the underside. And those pores will be white on fresh mushrooms and then turning yellowish as they age. The other thing about this mushroom is that it has a bulbous stem, it usually has a bulbous, not a straight stem. It's a little hard to see here, but that stem is covered with this fine white patterning, patterning that looks like white fishnet stockings on the stem. And this mushroom and a close edible relative both have that. Then the last thing I would say on this guy is that when you cut it, it does not stain a dark color. It doesn't stain. So let's look at, see if I got everything. I think I did. So um, our species is Boletus rubriceps. Uh, you may see Boletus edulis in older books, and that's because our species was originally thought to be Boletus edulis, which is another porcini. Okay, here you can see the fishnet patterning here, and that'll be white at first. It might get a little brownish with age. And you can see that the pores now are getting yellow. So I usually, when I'm eating these, um, I will eat them, I will eat the pores also, the sponge part, if it's still white, but once it starts to turn yellow, I like to remove it. Because, not because it's inedible, but it can get a little slimy in the pan. And I'd also like to call your attention that I cut this guy at the base with a knife. Um, and you can cut mushrooms or you can pull mushrooms. There is some, some people have concerns out there that you're disturbing the mycelium when you pull the mushroom, but there is no scientific evidence to support that. Um, you know, on the contrary, you know, mushroom, the mushroom is the, it's like the fruit of a huge organism underground. So, um, there we don't have evidence that you're hurting anything by pulling. So I usually like to pull this particular mushroom because you can see how much of it extends underground. And then you can slice off that dirt part in the field and you'll end up with more mushroom um, in the end. So here's a really nice one I found. These guys can get really big, like as big as a dinner plate. Um, and this one, you can see the stem is starting to turn a little bit brownish, a little bit brown in that patterning, and that's okay. And you can see where I cut the base of that. The other thing that doing this cleaning in the field allows you to do is know if it's wormy or not. You know, we're aiming for ones that aren't wormy. If there's just a couple of little fly larva in there, it's okay. You can still use the mushroom. But if it starts to stain and turn color and get mushy, it's past its prime. Okay, these guys are past their prime. What I do in this instance, I mean, I could tell that because of that yellow spore mass and the marks on the stem, they're going to be past their prime. But in the field, I just tend to poke them. And if they're soft, soft, they have give, they're probably past their prime. And so these guys are past their prime. This is just, you know, some people say that our Rocky Mountain Porcini look a bit like a pretzel bun. So I just put that picture because it looks like a pretzel bun. This is from above, you know, your search image from above when you're, you're looking for these guys. And I, I don't know if I mentioned, I showed you the habitats, but the habitat we're looking for for our Rocky Mountain Porcini is associated with spruce, Engelman spruce or blue spruce. So middle elevation spruce or mixed spruce forests, high elevation spruce forests. And they start earlier, like in July in the mid elevation forests, and then they start moving up in elevation. I found them up here at 11,000 feet, um, you know, through August usually, sometimes into September, uh, especially if we're getting rains. Okay, these are some 
really nice Rocky Mountain Porcini, a little more purple red um, and poking these there, they were very firm. So those were, those are some choice mushrooms. Okay. This is what it looks like to peel the sponge off. This one is way past its prime, but I, I think I was just getting a picture of peeling the sponge. You can see that worms have infested even the spongy part. But if you were really desperate and you really wanted to see if you could eat this guy, I would just peel that stuff off in the field. And then you can kind of slice from the outside of the mushroom in, taking thin slices and keep what's whitish until you get into worm civilization. And you can do that from the top down as well. Um, so, but you know, some people take the sponge stuff and they cut it into cubes and they dry it and then they powder it or don't powder it. If you don't powder it, you can use it as like um, a bouillon. You know, you can add hot water and get the flavoring from it for a soup base if you really wanted to. Um, you could powder it and use it as a spice. Okay, here are some things that are not porcini or king bolete. These guys, and you know, you can see that they have a pore layer on the underside of the cap that's spongy. So you might think it, it could be one. Well, it is a bolete. It's just not king bolete. Some people refer to king bolete as bolete, but that's, um, bolete is actually a general term for a group of mushrooms that have the spongy layer under the cap. So not every bolete is the king of boletes. This particular bolete is called short stem slippery jack. So it's a very descriptive name. That's Swillis brevipes for the for the Latin. I don't think I have that written down, but you can see it has a short stem and it's slippery on top. You know, the Rocky Mountain Porcini can get a little slippery on top in the rain, but not like this thick glutinous layer that this guy gets. Now this one doesn't even really grow next to porcini. It grows in pine forests. So, you know, if you're in a lodgepole pine forest and you see a bolete, it might be this guy. Real glutinous cap when wet, uh, when, when fresh, and then stuff sticks to it and dries to it when it is a little bit older. Um, this is totally an edible mushroom. You can eat this mushroom. Um, but you need to peel the slippery stuff off the top because that can cause stomach upset. So this is, you know, it's edible. And I ate a lot of it back in the day when I was learning my mushrooms. Um, I don't think of it as a choice mushroom, but it's, it's plenty good. So I'm not going to get too deep into this, but just to show you that it's not a porcini. This one is also not a porcini. So this is an aspen bolete, also a bolete, um, or it's also known as aspen scaber stalk. And the scaber stalk refers to these brown uh, scabers on the stalk. So if it has that, it's not a porcini. These guys also have kind of a brighter orange cap. It's not really super well reflected in my photo. And they grow in aspens, hence the name aspen scaber stock. So different habitat. Now this mushroom is widely eaten around the world. However, for some reason that the mycologists do not know, in Colorado, aspen boletes have been making a certain percentage of people sick. Not like dying, but like 24 hours of vomiting and diarrhea. So um, some people still eat these well cooked. I do not. I just can't seem to fit 24 hours of possible vomiting and diarrhea into my schedule. So uh, let's, now this is in the genus Lexinum. And we have other mushrooms in this genus in Colorado. So this guy is also a Lexinum mushroom. And it's also called a scaber stalk. And you can see the scabers on the stalk. This is the mushroom I think looks most like Rocky Mountain Porcini because it is a little bit redder in the cap and it grows in the same habitats. 
as Rocky Mountain Porcini. These guys tend to come up slightly later than the Porcini, but I have been fooled by these before and picked it and then looked at the stock and it had scabers. Another way to tell that you have a Lexanum and not a Porcini is this. If you slice the Aspen Bolete or the conifer scaber stalk um, and let it sit for a bit, you are gonna see a blue to black staining on the flesh. Rocky Mountain Porcini does not do this. So I avoid those Lexanums um, and just wanted to be able to show you the difference between those and the Rocky Mountain Porcini. So the fibril, the, the scabers on the stalk, and the staining are gonna set the lexinums apart. Okay, this is obviously not a porcini, but you've probably seen it because it's just so picturesque. This is our fly agaric mushroom, the Amanita muscaria. And on the underside of this cap, it's gills. So obviously you're not mistaking this for a porcini. Why am I showing this guy? because when you are somewhere where this mushroom appears, porcini are probably close by. So since this is so noticeable, you're hiking, you see these beautiful mushrooms, you know, the light bulb should go off, take a look around. There very well might be Rocky Mountain porcini nearby, which are a little bit less recognizable at first. Um, so this is, this is a flag for Rocky Mountain porcini. Okay, oh, and I put this guy in here. This is the white bolete, and this is actually a very close relative to the Rocky Mountain Porcini and may even be more delicious. It's a pretty buttery, delicious mushroom. It's quite similar to Rocky Mountain Porcini in, in, in the pores and in the white reticulation pattern on the stem. I tend to find these guys in Ponderosa, forests, they like pines, middle elevation pines, although we did find some in fair play last year, and they just have the whitish cap. So if you happen to spend a lot of time in the, uh, you know, a Ponderosa middle elevation habitat and see something that looks like a Rocky Mountain Porcini, but it's white, very well could be a, a choice edible. And I'm, again, not going to get too deep into that, but just so it's on your radar, because this is a nice mushroom. And they can have a white cap or they can have a slightly brownish cap. Um, and this is the same mushroom, um, white bolete, found with chanterelles, as you can see in the corner. Hi, I'm Erica, and um, thank you so much for watching my presentation on Rocky Mountain Porcini. That's actually an excerpt from a two-class series on Rocky Mountain mushrooms. So if you're interested in those, I invite you to check out my website at wildfoodgirl.com and just click on the classes link and you'll see a link to those mushroom classes as well as a, a large series of classes on edible wild plants. So, um, and if you scroll, if you go down further on that class link, you'll also see my local live classes in Colorado. And then, you know, if you're interested in being informed about when new classes are posted, you can join my email list on the email link at the same website. So thank you so much and best of luck hunting mushrooms.